Okie dokie, this is our very last video for Math 105. Uh, we're on the second to last page in the notes. On the previous video, we went over chi-square test of independence. And the last thing, I'm just going to um, do a short example to just finalize things. On our uh, previous example, we looked at the Titanic data. And we calculated a chi-square test statistic and p-value, stated the results. And then the last thing we looked at the observed minus expected. And what we do is we look at whether that's positive or negative. Since we're taking observed minus expected, a positive number means that the observed was larger than the expected. A negative number means that the observed was less than expected. So we're going to do that for our final example. And um, we're just going to use StatCrunch to actually calculate the uh, p-value. So we're not going to do a lot of stuff by hand. Uh, we're going to rely on StatCrunch for this example. All right, so this example um, has to do with a hospital and uh, whether or not Gilbert was working. So Gilbert's a nurse, and um, the other nurses noticed um, some missing drugs, and so they um, wanted to see if uh, patients were more likely to die when Gilbert was working. So there's two variables. Whether or not Gilbert was working is one variable, and um, death is another variable, Shift um, death on a shift. So um, we are going to do a chi-square independence, and that will tell us um, if whether or not someone dies on a shift is related to um, whether or not Gilbert was working. All right, so just like in the other example, we just state the null and alternative in words. So H naught, uh, Gilbert working is independent of a patient dying. So the patient may die or not, but it, they don't have any more of a chance to die when Gilbert's working versus not working. And then the alternative is that... Uh, Gilbert working is dependent of a patient dying, meaning maybe patients are more or less likely to die when Gilbert's working. And so we're going to go to um, StatCrunch right now for our very last example. And here it is. And, um, and so it's very easy to do this in StatCrunch. I'm just basically copying that same table. We have for rows whether or not Gilbert worked. And then the columns are um, for the death variable, death or no death on the shift. And so to do a chi-square test of independence, I go to uh, Stat and then Tables because these are this is a contingency table. And these instructions are in your course packet. And when I type in that table, it's just summary. Okay, it's not the actual raw data. So tables, contingency tables with summary. All right, and then it's pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory. The columns would be the column variable, which is death. So death and no death, because those are the two options. And then the next says row labels, and that row labels is in this column here that's labeled Gilbert. And so I just do Gilbert. And that's basically all there is to it. The first question, I want to get the expected values. And so if I hit next um, and check the expected count, those will give me the expected value. So I don't actually have to calculate them by hand. All right, so here are my results for the chi-square test. So you can see the contingency table again. And on the contingency table, we have the observed values. And then in the parentheses are the expected values. So these right here are the expected values. And so we can see there is quite a bit of discrepancy between the observed value and the expected. And then down here, this is our, our test statistic right here. That's what we would get if we took the observed minus the expected squared divided by the expected. So I'll show you that formula in a second. 
And then here's our p-value, and we can see our p-value is quite small. Okay, so with that information, um, I'm going to be able to answer all the remaining questions on, um, on the problem. So the expected values, uh, we computed those in, uh, in StatCrunch, and so I'm just going to enter them up by the table because it's usually um, customary to just write them in parentheses up there. And so this is just coming from my StatCrunch output. Uh, we had 11.6 for our expected. And then down here uh, was 62.4. And then over here, our expected was uh, 245. Uh, hold on a second. Okay, so 245. And the last expected value was uh, 1322. So those are all in parentheses there. Okay, so we can look at this. We're going to do that on the next page, but we can see that uh, more people died than expected when Gilbert was working, and then less people, there are less um, people that uh, died than expected when Gilbert wasn't working. So it's not looking good for Gilbert. All right, the chi-score test statistic we saw in the computer output was 86.5. Just pull that up again. Oh, I think I closed. Oh, no, here it is. Um, 86.5 was the test statistic. That's easy to calculate. Uh, you probably do it in class, but that's just using the formula on this um, page up here. So observed minus expected squared divided by the expected for each cell and you sum that up. Okay, so the uh, chi-square, we denote that with the Greek letter chi, which is uh, looks like that if you've never seen it, it's kind of like a capital X, uh, was 86.5. The p-value we saw was less than 0.001. And so my conclusion is just that we can reject the null. And conclude that the two variables um, are dependent. So that in itself doesn't tell me very much. I mean, maybe actually you would want Gilbert to be working. Maybe a patient's less likely um, to die if Gilbert was working. So what we want to do is calculate what we call residuals. So that's the observed difference uh, minus the expected difference or the expected value. So observed value minus the expected value for each cell. So I go up here and I would take 40 minus 11.6 and I would do that for each cell. So each cell has an observed and expected, and that's what I'm getting at here. So we want to calculate the differences for each cell between the observed minus expected, and that tells us um, quite a lot of information. So we look at how big the difference is and whether or not it's positive or negative. All right, so let's do that, and then we can summarize the results. So here we have 40 minus 11.6, and that's equal to positive uh, 28.4. Because we just have a 2 by 2 table, I know this difference is just going to be the opposite of that, so it's going to be negative 28.4, but we'll do it anyway.
Okay, and then I come over here. So I take 217 minus 245. That's equal to negative 28. And here I have uh, 1350 minus 1322. And that's equal to 28. And because it's a 2 by 2, that's why we have all the same numbers. But what, can, what we can get from this table is that because the 28.4 is positive in that first cell, uh, right here, because this is positive right here, then more people died when Gilbert was working than expected. And then uh, this, uh, this uh, number right here is negative. So when Gilbert wasn't working, less people died than expected. And so that's a lot more helpful than just knowing whether they're dependent or independent. So I'm going to summarize that more. People died than expected when Gilbert was working and less people died than expected. And what we mean by expected was if the two variables were actually independent. So less people died than, died than expected when Gilbert was off ship. So it doesn't look good for the work. Okay, that's it. And that's the end of the class notes. Good luck on your finals, and I hope you guys have a great um, winter break or summer break for next semester.